Hey, Mark Meldrum, Meldrum's Monster Garage, and look who walked into the garage here. It's the famous John Perrette, and this guy's built transmissions for us left and right over the years, and he built the transmission for the uh, 70 Chevelle over there, and of course, a number of 66 Chevelles, and uh, he happens to be going down to Florida, and I caught him here in Ohio, and he's going to take this back to Florida and do a rebuild on it. And I'm, I'm super happy about that. And then hopefully when I go down there in January, I can pick it up and bring it home. So we're going to go over this transmission a little bit and talk about, hey, why, why we're going to rebuild this. So, Okay, so let's just start with why we're rebuilding it. And we're rebuilding it because the synchronizers on the inside, this is the hub right, right here. Let me get a pen. This is the hub of the synchronizer right here. This is chewed up. And the reason that these get chewed up, this is the third force synchronizer. The reason it gets chewed up is because there's play that goes on here. And that play ends up creating a bind that goes hit here, partially because the transmission is bolted to the bell housing and you get a little bit of flex going on like this. And as a result of it, these synchronizers are usually bad or scored where the splines are. That's the primary reason. Uh, some of the other problems we have is the slider is banged up there. I don't know why it is. Uh, something happened and it was, there was chips that went on here and um, those could have fell inside and there could be some other things that are gonna need um, inspection once I get it apart. Uh, this is a 1965 transmission. 65 transmissions generally have a case of that ends in three, 325 and with the exception of Pontiac, 65 was the first year that the speedometer gear is on the passenger side, not the driver's side, where it got in the way of the shifter. And uh, so all everything other than Pontiacs in 65, they started having the speedometer gear exit on the passenger side, which is probably a better place. So, so I've been, I've been, and we'll, let's talk about date coding a little bit because Obviously, this is a 66 Chevelle convertible. The motor was all numbers matching and looked great, but this transmission uh, I had questions about because I date coded everything on the, I mean, it's got tags on it down here and it was pretty, <laughs> pretty well self-explanatory that this was a 1965 transmission and it was made in August. So it really doesn't match up with this car. So maybe back in the day, you know, somebody went ahead and, uh, you know, changed this out. Maybe it was a three-speed and they changed it to a four-speed. Maybe the original four-speed went bad. But uh, who knows? Hey, it was 60 years ago, you know? So who knows what could happen? But, you know, if we could, we could look at the, uh, the P08, which would have been August 18th, right? Right. Ma made in... So it's P for passenger gear, uh, 08 for the 8th the eighth month, which is August, and the 18th day. And 65, 65s were unusual because they had uh, stamping that wasn't, it was not gang stamped. It was stamped individually. So these, these, these stamps for the 65 are unique to all the Muncies. Also, I, th this is very interesting. This particular one, it looks like there was a number that was ground off of it, and, and then it was re-stamped. And this looks to me like a like a General Motors restamp, and they probably had their reasons for for doing that. I've seen these before with this particular type of configuration. This is not generally the guy in the backyard uh, grinding it off to put a new date code on it. <laughs> um, usually that happens with VIN numbers, but not date codes. So this is a 65, and uh, that's that. The, in my mind, that's a legitimate stamp, even though it does look like it was restamped. And if you look up here to the top, right here, you'll see the VIN number of this particular transmission. Right. And it starts with B, meaning it's Baltimore. And um, uh, it, was, it was the 3,908th car that came, off, that came off the line. So it, it was originally in a car and they came out of Baltimore. Gotcha. Um, now our car was Baltimore and it was built in May and I, that number does not match up with the serial number on the car. That would have been May of 66. 66, and right. And this was August of 60, 
five. Right. So yeah, it's it was way too far in advance. Furthermore, uh, the three twenty five cases did not go in to sixty six cars. They were zero. The last three digits were zero one zero. All right. So we, we know that it's not. The other thing that's interesting on this, because it's a 65, it does not have any grooves on the input shaft. There's no grooves here. And that does not mean that it's an M22. The 63s, 64s, and 65s had no grooves, and this is an M20. If it was an M21, a close ratio, M21s would have one groove. So you got to be careful. If you don't know what year transmission you're buying, you could think that this was an M22, but it is not. Gotcha. So just there was some changes that occurred in God, i'm giving john a workout this morning some changes <laughs> that occurred in 66 and I, I just want to go over those quickly here um this is always an education when we have john talking about transmissions so that's why we're talking about this so so this so the 65s had two primary improvements made to them in 66 so the, the gear is actually for the input shaft and the cluster gear were actually different for the 63s, 64s, and 65s, but they still had close ratios and wide ratios. And I, as I said, this is a wide ratio. But, but one of the things that they improved in 66 is this, this is the brass synchronizing ring here. I know it's dirty, but it is brass and it's pretty thin thin wood theory it's what i call a thin shoulder and in 66 these these shoulders were increased almost double they not quite a quarter of an inch and what that did the earlier synchronizing rings had a tendency to break they broke they broke right where there was a cutout there's three cutouts on that ring and they used to break right there and once they break they won't go into gear anymore so uh, we're going to upgrade this transmission and put a 66 and up synchronizing unit in it, which means we have to change the hub. The hub's bad anyhow, so we're going to change the hub and put, put the later style synchronizing rings in it. The other thing that was done differently in 66 that was another improvement was in the front here, this is the cluster gear pin or cluster gear shaft this here and and on 65 63s fours and fives this was seven eighth of an inch in diameter and it's currently it's 66 and thereafter it's one inch pin um it, it, it it's nice to have the one inch pin it's not necessarily as crucial i think the most important change was the uh was the synchronizing rings getting uh uh, a thicker shoulder so yeah this isn't going to be a high horsepower car it's going to be a, a daily driver with just that 327 is only going to be about 275 horsepower so you know we just want something that shifts really smooth and nice um reliability uh absolutely important to us but uh not from a standpoint of drag racing or originality yeah <laughs> well we'll take care of that and uh Mark's been down to see me in Florida yeah. before, and it uh, sounds like he's going to be down there again in January. So, and uh, I'm yep. going to give him this transmission and maybe yet another one for another customer I have in Ohio. Yep. So we'll see you in January, hopefully. Okay. Take care, Mark.